Welcome to Abergavenny Baptist Church. Life, faith, together. The Bible reading this morning is from John chapter 20 and verses 11 to 18. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they have taken my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, please tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried out, Rabboni, which is Hebrew for teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to my father, but go find my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord, and then she gave them his message. Can you remember a time when you just felt fully alive? Uh, for me, I always kind of remember sporting events like the time uh, when I won the, the World Wayski Surfing title or when we won the South African Schools Water Polo Tournament, the, the, the feeling of just being alive, that adrenaline, that excitement, that joy. Or, or, or the time when I proposed to Victoria. Or, or, or when I was saying, we were saying our vows to each other on our wedding day. Or the time when Naomi and, and Hannah were born, holding your newborn baby, cuddling your newborn baby for the first time. That, that, that adrenaline, that excitement, that joy, that feeling of being fully alive. Unfortunately, that feeling never lasts. The day after the sporting event when the adrenaline has gone and you just feel tired and exhausted and you think to yourself, is that it? Was it really worth it? Or after your baby has been born, a couple of weeks later, you're up at 2 a.m. in the morning. You haven't slept in weeks. And then your baby projectile vomits all over you. And you feel anything but alive. And there's so many situations in life which make us feel anything but alive. The loss of a loved one. The breakdown of a relationship. Pressure at work or at school. An acute sense of disappointment or failure. Or just that paralyzing fear. Yet Jesus says that he has come, that we can be fully alive in every and any season in life. In John chapter 10 and verse 10, Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I love the way the message translation puts it. I have come so they can have real and eternal life more and better life than they've ever dreamed of. It's come that you can have a profound sense of being fully alive. And so today we're starting a, a new series entitled Alive, which we're going to be looking at five different uh, personal encounters with the risen Jesus. And through these encounters, we can be transformed by love. Uh, we, we can be surprised by hope. We can be filled with peace. We can live in freedom, and we can fulfill our purpose. 
You see, through these encounters with the risen Jesus, and because Jesus is alive, we can be transformed by a love that is greater than our insecurities, by a hope that is greater than our disappointments, by a peace that is greater than our fears, and a freedom that is greater than our failures, and a purpose that can infuse our life with real meaning. And this is only possible because Jesus is alive. Because Jesus physically and literally rose from the dead. There's a story of, of a, a, a married couple, a wife, who was married to this really, really grumpy, grumpy guy. And, and, and this wife and her grumpy husband went on holiday to the Holy Land. And while they were in Jerusalem, the husband died. And the funeral director said to the wife, we can ship your husband back home for 5,000 pounds. Or he can be buried here in the Holy Land in Jerusalem for 150 pounds. And, and, and the wife took a moment to think about this and then she said, I'll pay the 5,000 pounds and have him shipped home. The funeral director queried, why would you want to spend 5,000 pounds to ship him all the way home when he could be buried here in the Holy Land, in Jerusalem, for only 150 pounds? The wife said, 2,000 years ago, a man died in Jerusalem, was buried in Jerusalem, and then three days later, he rose from the dead. I just can't take the chance. <laughs> That very humorous story makes a very serious point. 2,000 years ago, Jesus rose from the dead, literally and physically rose from the dead. And that's a historical fact. 2,000 years ago, Mary Magdalene had an encounter with the risen Jesus. Now, Magdalene isn't a surname. It's not like it's Miss Magdalene. Uh, it's, it isn't her surname, it's the, it's the name of a place. It's a name from a place where she comes from, and that's a, that place is a small place in Galilee called Magdala. And so this is a real historical person from a real historical place. And, and Mary Magdalene had a lot of problems in life. She had a very difficult life. She had a lot of difficulties. She had a lot of mental health issues. And she went to Jesus, and Jesus healed her, restored her, and she became a follower of Jesus. She was one of Jesus' closest followers, a disciple. She was there when they crucified Jesus. All the men, all the male disciples had deserted. They had fled, but she was there at the foot of the cross. She saw them nailing Jesus to the cross. She saw Jesus' life slowly drain away from him. She saw them taking Jesus' dead body, his corpse, off the cross. And she was there when they buried him in a tomb. Can you imagine how she must have felt? Overwhelmed with sorrow and grief and disappointment and probably confusion. And this would have been her state of mind as three days later she goes to the tomb expecting to find a dead body, wanting to give him a proper burial, wanting to pay her final respects, a way of processing everything that has happened. But then the unthinkable happens. She finds an empty tomb. And we're told that there were two angels there. She doesn't know they are angels. She doesn't realize that. But the angels say to her in John chapter 20 and verse 13, Woman, why are you crying? She responds, They have taken my Lord away and I don't know where they've put him. Take note, she doesn't go, Wow, empty tomb. Jesus must be alive. He must have risen from the dead. She doesn't go like that. She doesn't respond like that. That is simply beyond her horizon. It's beyond her expectation. She's expecting to find a corpse. And so she assumes someone must have taken the body. Then we read in verse 14, at this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. She doesn't recognize Jesus. She is standing face to face with Jesus, and she doesn't recognize him. 
I, I find that really interesting. Because she knew Jesus really well. She was one of Jesus' closest disciples. She traveled with Jesus, but yet we have this moment where she doesn't recognize him until he says her name. She assumes he's a gardener. And so she says in verse 15, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've put him, and I will get him. And Jesus simply responds by saying her name, Mary. And soon as he says her name, she recognizes him. You see, she... She wasn't expecting to see a walking, talking Jesus, an alive, risen from the dead Jesus. That was beyond her expectation. She was expecting to find a corpse. But when Jesus says her name, when she hears his voice, and she hears his voice saying her name, she's like, oh my Lord, it's you. And, and, and suddenly like, her eyes are open to a whole new reality that Jesus is alive, that Jesus has risen, literally and physically risen from the dead. Soon as she hears that voice, soon as she hears her name, and, and, and it's like really, really him, and it's recognizably him by someone who loved him the most. And, and this is a, a historically reliable report. I mean, if you were making this up, you would never have a woman as your first and primary witness, right? Well, you definitely weren't back in that day. Because in the Roman culture of that day, in the Jewish culture of that day, a woman was considered an unreliable witness. Their testimony wouldn't hold up in a court of law. So if you were making this up, you would never make a woman as your primary and first witness to the risen Jesus. I find this remarkable. Not only as evidence that this is a historically reliable report, but it's a stunning affirmation of woman in a male-dominated culture. And so it's only when Mary hears Jesus calling her name that she recognizes him. And this is so significant, not just for Mary, but for us as well. It, it speaks profoundly to us that God does not just love us in general, but God loves us in particular. God doesn't just love us as a blob called humanity. But he loves us by name. He loves you by name. I find this so encouraging that God knows me intimately, loves me personally, and calls me by name. And today, God is calling you by name. He's calling you to himself, either for the first time or to, to know him more deeply. And it's through this love that our lives are transformed. Multitudes through history, from the broken like, like Mary, to the outwardly successful but inwardly empty, all speak about how the love of God has transformed their lives through an encounter with the risen Jesus. How does this love transform us? Well, it gives us a new significance, a new identity, a new belonging, and a new purpose. So firstly, a new significance, an eternal significance. 
Jesus says in verse 17, to, he says to Mary, who quite clearly and understandably is physically holding on to Jesus. And so Jesus says, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. Ascending to his Father is referring to an event that will happen in 40 days' time. Forty days later, the physical risen from the dead Jesus ascended to his Father in heaven. And he's still ruling and reigning in heaven today. And he will be for all eternity. This has eternal significance. See, it's, when we say Jesus rose from the dead, we're not talking about resuscitation. Many people have been resuscitated. But they all eventually die. When Jesus rose from the dead, he never died again. And, and so it's not 100% correct to say Jesus came back from the dead. It's more correct to say that Jesus went through death and came up the other side. He opened up the door for all humanity to experience life after death in a new creation where there's no more sickness or decay or death, but everyone lives forever. This has an eternal significance. And Jesus rising from the dead proves to us that this is not wishful thinking. This is not wishful thinking. This is a sure and a certain hope that we have in Jesus. And when we grasp this eternal significance, it enables us to be fully alive. Secondly, it gives a new sense of identity. Uh, Jesus says, carries on in verse 17, Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Because Jesus has risen from the dead, the disciples have a complete new identity. See, up until this point in John's Gospel, Jesus has referred to his disciples as disciples, as servants, and even friends. But now for the first time, he refers to them as my brothers. And Jesus has always referred to God as my God and my Father. But now he refers to God as my Father and your Father. My God and your God. Do you see what he's saying? They are now a child of God. They have a complete new identity as a child of God. And the way we discover our core identity to is, is to discover how much we are loved in Jesus. And this leads to our next point, a new sense of belonging. Because other Christians are my brothers and because God is our Father, that means we're part of the same family. We've become a valued member of the family of God where we belong. The church. And through our faith in Jesus, we have a new identity as a child of God, and we have a place where we belong. How is this possible? Well, it's all because Jesus died for us on the cross. He died for our sins, for the consequences of our selfishness and self-centeredness. He took all that separated us from God, our guilt and our shame upon himself, and he dealt with it on the cross. And when he rose again, he defeated it for good so that we could receive the Holy Spirit, so that we could be born again, so that we could become a child of God, and so that we can belong in his family. And it's the sense of identity and the sense of belonging that enable us to become fully alive. And then fourthly and lastly, a new sense of purpose. Jesus goes on to say in verse 17 to Mary, go instead to my brothers and tell them. Verse 18 we read, Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. She has a new sense of purpose. And she has a great privilege of being the first person to proclaim that Jesus is alive. And just as Mary went to the disciples with the good news, we have the purpose of sharing the good news of Jesus with everyone, telling others about our encounter with the risen Jesus. 
What a privilege. And it's this sense of purpose that enables us to be fully alive. Now, of course, we're not going to encounter a physical risen from the dead Jesus like Mary did. And that's why I think it's so significant that Mary didn't recognize Jesus when she saw him physically, but only when he, she heard him call her by name. Because I think this sets a pattern for all future encounters. We don't encounter the physical risen from the dead Jesus, but we do hear him calling our name. Not audibly, but by the Holy Spirit. And he's calling you by name. Because he knows you by name. And he loves you by name. And he wants to transform your life by his love. You see, becoming a Christian is, is just the start of a journey of increasingly being transformed by the power of God, which is love. And today, he is calling you by name. And this isn't something we need to just understand intellectually. No, this is something we need to experience in a deeply emotional, psychologically, and indeed spiritual level. Have you experienced that? Have you personally experienced that? If not, then why don't you take the first step today? And then come for the rest of the series to find out more. Or, or pick up one of the Why Jesus booklets that are lying around and, and discover more about how you can become fully alive in Jesus. But why don't you take the first step today? And if you want to do that, then simply, in the quietness of your heart, pray this prayer with me. The words are on the screen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sin, that you rose from the dead, and that you are now alive. I admit my need of you. I turn away from living my life my way. Please forgive me and please come into my life, filling me with your love, hope, peace, freedom, and purpose through the power of your Holy Spirit. I commit to following you and your ways all the days of my life. Amen. Thank you for watching. For more information, please visit our website, abgavenibaptist.co.uk.